Welcome to Talking Hope, breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer. Brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. Hope lives here in Orange County. Hello and welcome to Talking Hope. I'm Darren Godden, and I'm pleased to be speaking with father and son medical oncologist and hematologist, Dr. Simon Chekmajian and Dr. Nishan Chekmajian, both who practice together at City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center. Uh, Dr. T and Dr. Nishan, it's so great to have you here today. Great to be here. Thank you, Darren. So great to see father and son working together in the same area. Dr. T, I'm sure it has been incredibly rewarding uh, to work with your son. Can you tell us uh, what was your journey to getting into medicine and um, what has it meant to you to see your son follow in your footsteps? Well, I knew I wanted to be in medicine and particularly in cancer care very, very early on in my life. I think my father had an influence on me in that regard. So um, when I was a kid, cancer was really a very bad disease that had very few options for intervention. Um, and over five, six decades, things fortunately have changed tremendously for the better. And there is uh, a full speed ahead now with the, the new technologies that allow us to have hope. Awesome. And uh, did you say your, your father had an influence on you? Was he also a physician or? No, he actually um, had to emigrate uh, from, um, from Armenia at the time when he was about to enter medical school. And uh, because of the circumstances, uh, he went to South America, started to work there, and was unable to pursue an education um, in, in medical school. But uh, he sure made uh, an effort to have his kids do that. Oh, that's awesome. And so you obviously have done the same thing for, for Nishan. So what does that mean to you to see him follow in your footsteps? Well, Nishan joined me for rounds uh, at the hospital when he was a toddler. You know, the nursing team was very familiar with him there. Uh, and uh, also twice a year, we had uh, events with our patients uh, where we all got together. So my patients saw my children grow and um, that was a very good way for them to see what was the relationship really the human level contact that i had with my patients i think that played a role in their um in their interests and in their vocation and dr nishan what are your memories as a child and what led you to make the decision to pursue medicine and pr specifically oncology well, I, I certainly remember going on rounds with my dad at the uh, various hospitals, but especially uh, in Long Beach, where um, uh, we were largely based. And uh, I remember, um, you know, playing, playing uh, around the nursing stations, which is something that I don't think would be allowed anymore. <laughs> but uh, um, there were the, you know, there, there are the... Uh, the shoots that uh, send medications and other, you know, things uh, up and down different floors in the hospitals, which are still used um, in hospitals uh, today. And at that time, I would, I would just, you know, send things up and down to different floors, and and it was like a great time. Uh, but in 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 the process, as I got older, I also uh, got to see glimpses of things going on. Um, that were very difficult and conversations that, that, that you know, uh, were very difficult. And my, da and my dad took care of a lot of uh, people who um, were very close to us and, and um, uh, important members of the, of the community. And so I, I uh, also knew many of them. And so I, I got uh, a very close up, uh, intimate, uh, view and eventually understanding of what it meant to uh, take care of a patient. Uh, and it, it had to do, of course, with medicine and science and, and, and using um, uh, the latest um, data and best therapies and also clinical trials. But uh, it also had to do with how 
one approach to patients uh, and, and, and really learning to listen. Hmm. Uh, and I think that's probably the, the most, um, the biggest lesson that I've learned is, is to learn how to listen first. Hmm. Uh, and, um, and it's difficult to do because we live in an environment that is so distracting. Uh, in fact, it's often hard to manage our own attention. Uh, but, um, listening to our patients is something that we do, uh, uh, here and that we strive to do at, uh, at City of Hope. Great. Um, so it sounds like you learned a lot from your dad and obviously you've learned a lot in your studies and you bring your own experience to the table as well. I'm wondering, what do you guys have in common in terms of your approach to, um, care delivery? Well, I think we keep, uh, Go ahead. yeah, we, we keep the patient at the center of what we do. Uh, and uh, I think fundamentally um, we're constantly working on communication uh, and uh, communicating not only with the patients, their families, uh, their loved ones, their partners, uh, but also communicating with the medical uh with the with the practitioners the, the the physicians that we're working with um with the primary care doctors who are so important in uh in the infrastructure of our healthcare system and so important to our patients um to keep uh, everybody informed and to collaborate collectively to get a, a a holistic picture of what's going on with the patient not only medically but also uh in their lives socially um, understanding uh, their uh, motiva motivations and preferences so that we can individualize the care of the patient um, one by one. Hmm. And Dr. Dr. T, you were going to add? Yeah, I think uh, one of the most important aspects and traditions in medicine is to teach. And, um, and there's no way, that there's no better way to learn than to teach. And, uh, and one thing that has happened in the evolution of our relationship uh, with Nishan is that uh, you, you teach, uh, but at the same time you learn and you and talk about listening, you start to give very great importance to listen to your son because you, as, as time evolves, you will learn from your children. Um, I think uh, that's a message that I have for any parent. Make sure to listen because you will learn. It's beautiful, beautiful. Um, so let's talk about your, your actual specialties. Um, Dr. T, what is your specialty and where have you um, spent the most of your time in the area of research as well? Well, research um, at this point has accelerated. Uh, it's uh, a really the most important factor uh, when you think about hope, because you have to think about not only the importance of the research for an individual patient, which is always front and center in our minds, but uh, the activity at City of Hope, you know, with uh, incredible scientists in the lab uh, performing studies now that lead to options for intervention with very specific drugs that can attack weak, what weak links in cancer cells, um, drugs that can influence our own immune systems to, you know, harness that power to kill the cancer cells. Um, those scientists are working uh, hand in hand with us, with the clinicians at the bedside. So that now that synchrony, that dynamic interaction is leading to clinical trials that not only offer hope to individual patients, they offer hope to all of us as a society mm -hmm. to cure cancer, to increase the percentage of patients who can put cancer behind and also to lead to preventive and uh, early diagnosis uh, interventions that, that are becoming so, so important as we move forward. And that's certainly the mission of the, um, 
of our Irvine, Irvine Cancer Center, the Lenar Foundation Cancer Center, uh, that is now providing these services. Thank you. And, and what about you, Nishan? Uh, talk about your specialty and uh, the areas of research that you've been focused in as well. Uh, I'm a general medical oncologist and hematologist. So my uh, clinical practice um, has uh, a patient with a variety of illnesses, but I do have uh, some disease linking interests and, um, and I do clinical trial work uh, in lung cancer and in prostate cancer. Mm. Uh, in clinical trials, I'm, I'm focused on precision medicine. Uh, those are uh, oftentimes pills that uh, target specific genetic mutations that happen uh, in different cancers and also in, in, in immunotherapy um, methods to treat different types of cancers. Um, we're finding, as a general oncologist, that's exciting because we find that some of the genetic mutations apply not only to one type of cancer, but to multiple. So you may have, for example, um, a breast cancer that's driven by a, an alteration or a mutation in a, in a gene called HER2. Um, but you may have a lung cancer that's also driven by a similar alteration in the same gene. And you may have a colon cancer that is also driven by a similar genetic mutation. And so um, it is uh, from a scientific uh, standpoint and also from a clinical standpoint, uh, it, it's nice to be able to make those connections and see patients uh, and help patients uh, uh, and apply these concepts across multiple cancer types. Hmm. So this is probably a good time to ask this question. Um, between the two of you, you have so many years and decades of experience. Um, a, a strange way to ask it, but what excites you about the future of cancer prevention and cancer care? Well, it's a very exciting time to be in oncology. Uh, and uh, the, the, the greatest uh, area of research now is, as Nishan said, precision medicine, where we are able to really identify targets in cancer cells that are very specific and avoid the side effects on other tissues. But also, uh, very often in combination now with um, immunotherapies, drugs that influence the immune system, cancer killer cells are prompted to identify the cancer that was hiding before, but now is revealed to the immune system so that uh, the cancer cell is attacked. And the combinations of these interventions are leading to uh, really very big advances in the ability to treat uh, cancers. Uh, I think that that's what is exciting. Uh, we talk about it all the time. Just in the last day, um, I had a colleague whose brother uh, had a recurrence of a, of a cancer that was being treated somewhere else. And uh, through discuss, discussing that with Nishan and then through a couple of communications with our colleagues um, uh, at City of Hope, we already have a path, an intervention uh, uh, possible in the clinical trial uh, setting that could that could really offer hope to that patient. That's incredible. That's incredible. Nishan, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I I, I agree with all that. Uh, you you also asked about prevention. I think there's 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 so much work being done in prevention, uh, in understanding uh, the risk factors for cancers, um, both external risk factors, but also uh, risk factors that we might be born with, which are hereditary, or we call them germline uh, mutations in certain genes. Uh, we have a great genetic counseling department at uh, the City of Hope Orange County Lenar Foundation Cancer Center, and we work with them very closely because we, we really do want to prevent uh, uh, cancers in general, but also for our patients and their family members, uh, this, these types of services are very important. We're getting uh, more and more precise with that technology. We're able to use uh, a, a saliva swab or even a, a just a, a fairly simple blood test 
uh, draw uh, and test to get that garner that information. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, and that's been very helpful and very exciting. That is exciting. And um, it really demonstrates what we mean by when we say hope is here, that there truly is hope for uh, people who either are already diagnosed or there's hope for people to never have that diagnosis if they're doing the right thing. So um, thank you both for that. Um, I, I want to know now, um, you both have used the word hope several times. So <clears throat> let's start with you, Dr. T. What does the word hope mean to you? What does the concept of hope mean to you? Well, you know, it, uh, it was, I think, about four or five weeks ago that one of our colleagues um, during our Friday research meeting for early interventions presented uh, some information about a patient who really seemed entirely hopeless in terms of achieving any kind of control of a very, very advanced recurrent refractory cancer. He went through the process that he followed uh, at City of Hope in designing an intervention for her and how that was implemented and all of the barriers that had to be gone over in order to deliver that therapy. And, um, and then the patient went into a complete remission. Um, it, it is truly nearly miraculous, but it's not a miracle. It's hard work by incredibly talented people, doctors who are working to provide hope when hope seems to have been lost. And we're very proud of that. Thank you. And same question to you, Nisha. What, is, what does hope mean to you? Hope uh, to me means the connection that we have with our patients because that's really what provides the hope. It's understanding the individual in front of you and understanding all the aspects or as much as you can about their, li uh, their lives is so important. And that connection and that understanding that as their doctor, we're going to do whatever it takes gives hope. Beautiful. Well, Dr. T, Dr. Nishan, um, both oncologists, both doctors, but um, at the very core, you're a father and son working together. Uh, what a tremendous legacy it is that you've um, established Dr. T for your son and for others of, of bringing hope. And now to see your son continuing in those footsteps and also bringing hope, um, it just has to be something that your family is so proud of. So we're glad to have you both practicing here at City of Hope Orange County. And uh, we're glad to have you both as our guests today on the podcast. Um, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Great. And thank you for all the rest of you who have tuned in. We hope that you'll join us next time on Talking Hope. Until then, I'm Darren Godden. We'll see you next time. Thank you all for listening to Talking Hope, where breakthrough conversations about preventing, treating, and curing cancer have been brought to you by City of Hope, an NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. This is the hope you've been waiting for. For more information, visit cityofhope.org forward slash OC, or make an appointment at any of City of Hope's five Orange County locations, including City of Hope Orange County Lennar Foundation Cancer Center, the most advanced cancer treatment center in Orange County. Call 888-333-4673. That's 888-333-HOPE. -E.